Well, now, before we have a break, I want to say something about uh, the Jonathan Fletcher report that came out this week. Uh, as you know, Jonathan Fletcher was a friend of mine and of uh, several people here at St. Helens. Together with many others, I was profoundly shocked when I first heard news of his abuses in early February 2019. Our concerns are, and have been throughout, first and foremost, for those damaged by Jonathan. His was a gross abuse of power, and our deepest sympathy is and has been with the victims. 318 have now, the uh, Safeguarding Agency 318 have now produced a very substantial report. It's just short of 150 pages long. It contains 66 recommendations. It will take considerable time to digest. I and others will be reading it with care. We will also be listening to other voices as we consider its recommendations. And already I can see things in the recommendations made that we need to implement at St. Helens. There are bound to be other things that should be changed. Many of us will be aware that subsequent to the 318 report being written, a second statement was produced by a small group who had a part in shaping the 318 report. That group was known as the Independent Advisory Group. This additional statement and further social media comments are clearly politically driven. And this action has significantly cheapened the report itself raises questions for the organization that produced the report in the first place. And I think that is a very, very great pity. Furthermore, very serious allegations have been made in a coordinated campaign on social media. And members of the so-called independent advisory group have formed a central part of that campaign. And that's why I'm mentioning this now this morning. In particular, allegations have been made publicly concerning the integrity of Brian O'Donoghue with regard to his responsibilities as a trustee of a separate organization to St. Helens. Those who've leveled those accusations very publicly have not taken any time to investigate what they allege. They've simply made assumptions and put out their defamatory remarks on social media for their own political gain. They call into question Brian's integrity with regards to confidential information of which he was aware as a trustee, and they suggest that he acted inappropriately. And I want to assure you that Brian has acted with impeccable integrity in this whole matter. What is more, I've known Brian for over 25 years, and there is nobody I would trust more than Brian O'Donoghue. Sorry if that's a disappointment to some of you, but it's true. Prior to the writing of the report, I'm glad to say that a full and independent review was done on the leadership culture at St. Helens. The review was conducted by an employment barrister of some note. It included over 80 interviews with staff and former staff. I mention this because allegations have been made about the leadership culture of churches such as St. Helens. This review found that, and I quote, there is no evidence of authoritarian, abusive, bullying or coercive behavior in St. Helens. I am very glad of that. Of course, the independent review of the leadership culture at St. Helens recommends changes, 25 in fact. The PCC, the church wardens, and myself have been considering those recommendations and are in the process of implementing them. Uh, in conclusion, three things to note. First, myself, the church wardens, the PCC, welcome the raising of any concerns anybody may have about St. Helens. Should you wish to raise a matter completely independently, then the Archdeacon of London, whose name and contact details are easily available, uh, can be contacted. And then there is the London Diocesan Safeguarding Team. Please do ask me if you would like to, or any warden or PCC member, about the process of review 
with regards to the Jonathan Fletcher. And as I say, if you would rather not ask me or PCC member or warden, then please go to these other bodies. Secondly, I am very sorry to have to be dealing with these matters here on a Sunday morning. I am so glad that we have been studying 2 Timothy. At the end of 2 Timothy 2 and in the early verses of 2 Timothy 3, we find precisely the kind of behavior that we have witnessed this week spoken about. The New Testament has plenty to say on these matters, and it was one of the young members of the Sunday evening congregation who reminded me of this earlier this week. Finally, please do pray. Pray first and foremost for the victims of Jonathan's abuse who must feel that they're being used like a political football. Pray for Emmanuel Church Wimbledon. They have been dealing with this for two years. Pray for Robin Weeks, who leads that church. And do pray that it will become clear as I pray very quickly what is going on so that Christians will not be further unsettled and damaged. I received a text just before this service from John Stevens, who is the director of FIEC, and his text finished like this. Christ is Lord. The gospel is true. His word is powerful and active. Jesus knows truth will be vindicated in the end. Praise God. Well, I'm sorry to be raising these matters, as I say, this morning, but I thought you should hear from me on them. And we're now going to have an interval and an opportunity at home to switch off digital things that might further distract us. Uh, and then I, we will resume in a moment or two's time.